Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan confirmed that he will meet with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in the Czech capital tomorrow. Armenian media is also reporting that a four-way meeting will take place in Prague between Pashinyan, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev, French President Emmanuel Macron and European Council President Charles Michel. The leaders of all 27 EU member states, as well as leaders from countries in the broader region, including the South Caucasus and the Western Balkans, have been invited to the summit. And yesterday evening, the Armenian Defense Ministry confirmed that 17 Armenian prisoners of war had been returned from Azerbaijan. The servicemen in question were captured in the mid-September attack by Azerbaijan on Armenia proper. Armen Krikoryan, the head of Armenia's Security Council, wrote on Facebook that the return of the 17 Armenian POWs was the result of a tripartite meeting on September 27th on the initiative of the United States. Krikoryan added that he hopes this tripartite format will continue to produce positive results, and that Armenia continues to adhere to all agreements reached in Washington. Pashinyan had previously stated that Azerbaijan had committed to returning 17 Armenian POWs by September 30th, after trilateral talks with Armenia and the US. The date came and went with no handover. On October 4th, again at the initiative of the American side, a telephone conversation between Armenian Foreign Minister Arat Mirzoyan, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, and Azerbaijani Foreign Minister J. Bayramov took place. They discussed a future peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan, as well as creating a mechanism of communication between Baku and Stepanakert. And Armenia's economy this year performed better than expected, the World Bank said in a regional report. Overall, the World Bank is estimating 7% economic growth in Armenia this year, a notable improvement on last year's growth rate of 5.7%. Though Armenia was expected to be negatively impacted by the war in Ukraine, the report said, Armenia's economy has performed better than anticipated, supported by strong domestic demand and large money transfers and visitors from Russia. Armenia's growth this year was driven mostly by the services sector, especially in tourism, finance and IT, as well as manufacturing and construction. Meanwhile, Armenian banks enjoyed a 2.5-fold increase in total money transfers to Armenia, mostly from Russia. At the same time, time, inflation rose by an estimated 8.5% in Armenia this year. The World Bank is forecasting a lower inflation rate of 6.7% next year. The report did also point out a number of structural bottlenecks, which include Armenia's closed borders with Azerbaijan and Turkey, conflict in the region, and low productivity and firm competitiveness. And in the European Parliament, the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Josep Borrell, attended a Q&A session where he commented on the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict. Borrell stated that Azerbaijan has bombarded areas well into the interior of Armenia. We're not seeing hostilities over a disputed area, rather incursions into Armenian territory. Azerbaijan has occupied part of Armenia's territory, Borrell said. Borrell added that Turkey continues to support Azerbaijan, and the EU is asking Turkey to use its influence to reduce tensions in the region. With regards to the EU's gas deal with Azerbaijan, reached in August, Borrell stated that there will be no political concessions made when it comes to the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict as a quid pro quo. Finally, Borrell noted that the EU had suggested that an EU mediation mission be deployed to the Armenia-Azerbaijan border, but Baku rejected the idea. Armenia agrees and Azerbaijan doesn't. What more do you want us to do? We are not going to send EU troops without the agreement of both parties, Borrell concluded. 